And we told that was the second round of, of, of slaves, or ex-slaves, if you will, that were brought and they came on. All right, folks, welcome. The Mayflower, and we are here at the Provolene Asian, where Liberia was celebrate the so they about the city to a few years of existence, Pan African leadership. And this is Vision TV. And you are witnessing so the historical scene of the world. There is your folks. wheel around, and then goes down, and then you draw back, you draw back with this year, and then you drink. Yeah, yeah. Whatever much water you want or to take a bath. There's a big old tree over there, yeah, naturally where human beings are gathered. They're comfortless, right? Yeah. And so back there was the place they used to go and settle their dispute. We may take a tour there too, right? I'm not at the authority to do that. But Anjani, you want to say something to your people? Yeah, why not? All right, we have Anjani also here. Yeah. What happened today? Okay. That is uh, the historical well when the free slave came. They don't teach slaves anymore. You understand? So you don't even know the purpose of it. They wear up in Yano here, they throw it up there, chip up up here. You got no idea of it. So right now, when you go home, you're going to start telling your friends that. He was start telling his friends that. He saw the first well, the five year job to get safe water. You give water and you take the bath and other things. But they got no idea today is Pan Year Day, January 7th. Yeah. So, how many people know that today is Pan Year Day? So, we have to go back to our roots. We have to go back to where we came from. So, my beginning, hmm? Pan Year's Day, when they say Pan Year's, eh, they mean first. The first people that came here, they call it the pioneers. They used to be here. But then the people came from Europe and America, America and paid some money, tobacco, and liquor, and guns. They gave it to some chiefs. And then there was war between various tribes. And some of them were captured. The stronger chiefs. And also, we have students. Sold I also here yeah, listening to the historical right? event. And then the white people took yeah, explaining the about the uh, 200 to years Europe. of existence and how uh, what we say is Liberia began. Great Britain um, and other parts of Europe, like, like uh, Sweden, you name it, Europe. So uh, the other bash went to America, all right? And they were settled, mainly settled in the south. Of America, just as we have north, south, east, and west, eh? the slavery plantation were mainly focused in the south of America. Some of them were gene, and some of them died while they're taking away and were thrown overboard. When you, when you, there's a tradition when you die in the ship, they don't carry you and bury you, they throw you overboard. So some of them from fatigue, from hunger, uh, from thirst, and you know, they just, they just died. Some of them. Cox simply killed because the ship, the business of the ship was overcrowded and you know, with slaves, thousands of them. They had crammed them up like sardines. You know, no sardines, and so I like a force in the sardine cup. Like, yeah, our people were looking in the ships and you know, crammed it up like this here. Yeah. And, and it was uncomfortable, and some died from malaria and, and cold. Because you go in miles and miles across the ocean, you're not sure where you go with some people are blindfolded. Already they didn't know where they were taking you, you gotta go. You take it or leave it. Your gene has sold you to slavery and you got to go. And so some of them are learning in America, they had a day they call Black Friday. Black Friday was the kind of day where they would bring the slaves to the marketplace. And then the wife would say, buy the one, buy the one, she's she's beautiful, you see her today, she's strong, she can make you a good servant. And then you, you pack her naked, they're just small bumper, they tie around you. And then they'll say, okay, buy the other one, buy the other one. You'll see his muscle, this one is young. He's just 18 years old or 16 years old, it will serve you well. And then you will see the wet guys go, I'll give one another. I will get 150. I will get $50. And so I will say, I get 200. Would be the one who take the slave. So when you take the slave now, you carry them home. You tell them, do this, this, and that. If they don't do it, you're not going to beg anybody. You're not paying their salaries to say, more, hey, I can't my pay. No, 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 no. 
you are the property of the slave master. You are a property. Just as this is my property. Just as your pen, your copy book, your, 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 your book bag are your property. So human beings were like properties. You understand me, Anazo? They own you. You didn't have free will. You can't vote. You don't have your own say. No right. All right? You're the property. You do what they want you to do. And, and, and so it was like that on the slave plantation. I went to America, I saw some trees in the, in the south. And so when let's take out the chains around them, the chains, so chain the people to some of the trees. And the chains are in the trees, now you know the tree now grow. It, it, you can't take them from there. You go there today, you will see it. I went to South Carolina, it's there. Atlanta, some of it there. So you see, so when they were getting plenty now, the weapons are getting impressive. Ah, the day people get too plenty here, yeah. Uh, they will take over our country. So let's carry them back to, to where they belong. So they were brought to, I think, when I Liberia, there used to be the Green Coast. And I think, why you call it the Pepper Coast? Because they, got, they have some BB pepper here, they call it the Malaguta pepper. Excuse me. You know, so they have the Portuguese used to call it. So they carry them first to Chevrolet Island in Sierra Leone. But then the mosquitoes and the place of cropping us, but they didn't like it. And then they ended up here. Yeah. And so there were the, the, the natives, they were not happy to see them. They thought people were coming back again for most days, or people were coming to attack them. And so some of the chiefs, some of the chiefs said, no, we can't send the people back, let's accept them. And Chief, Chief, Chief Zulu Doma, that the role I'll be playing today in the drama, Chief Zulu Doma, or one of those chiefs that said, look, gentlemen, these people you see here, they may be dressed up fine and looking a little bit civilized and all, but one thing I notice, uh, they, they, they have the same color as we have. They're black, we are black. And then, so, so long they say they come in peace, let's accept them. And another person said, no, chiefs, you don't know their intention. They may attack us, they may overtake our land. But the chiefs said, look, they got red blood in their veins, we got red blood in our veins, we are one. So a portion of this place was given to them, they signed to aid, they gave some rum, rum and liquor. And they gave some tobacco, the old people of my grandma, my great grandma used to smoke tobacco, they would match it and put it in the pipe. And, you know, and so they gave them small money, something like three hundred dollars, and then they signed the paper. And then after they didn't start with Liberia, still was in Liberia. After 14, 15, 20 years, before they came together, they said, "Look, why don't we form our own country? Let's go in for independence." So they put some laws together, they put up their own constitution, and then they decide to sign to that constitution. They call it the Declaration of Independence. Let me hear you say who've heard about the Declaration of Independence before. So that you have got July 26 today. All right? It didn't happen the day they came, not the week, not the following month. It took years. So July 26, 1847, became Liberia's independence. So this is why uh, on the year coming, July can we say 26 days. And so now we took this, my 26 on you, my 26 on you. But it started from there. And then when they were, when they wanted to sign the Declaration of Independence, uh, they signed it in the Providence Baptist Church. Or Ashman Street, you know that church, eh? Yes. And then there were 11 persons. That time, Labro was not having 15 counties. Labro was not even having 9 counties. Labro was not having 6 counties. Labro was divided into 3 provinces the Bosorado, the Basa Cook, and the Mississippi region. That's Sanos. Eh, you know? So, those three counties were the ones that represented Liberia. So, some came from Sino, some came from Basso, some most of them came from Mosorano, and they were 11 in total, and they signed that we want to be by ourselves. We want to make our own laws, we want to make our own rules. So, that became Liberian independence. So, it is not the problem. The American people are not having that. They thought, hey, these guys are not ready. They're not ready to govern themselves. But I people said already, some countries recognize that we independence. Some like America, it took 10, 15 years to start recognizing us. But here we are to do on our own. So today we come to tell you what, and this was like 1822. Man, you know, like we got independent, 18 what? No, Labrador got formed 1821, 1822. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. About independence, what? 1847. 1847. You guys are good at history, but clap it yourself. Yeah, can't draw your water. Can't draw your water. <clears throat> All right, there you have it. That was the. 
that was the fresh, fresh well that was dug here when the uh, free slave came from uh, America. Uh, the African American came from America. The first place they ever landed is. It is a Aslan, called the Provena Aslan, and there you see, this is the historical well here uh, uh, that you see, uh, this fellow is drawing the water from, this was the first well that was dug uh, for water, and we are here at Liberia to celebrate uh, 100, two, sorry, 200 years of uh, existing here at the Provena Aslan, and this is Vision TV, and we are they are giving you what is unfolding. And they landed in a place called Lysenter, where they sold them. And we're going to take you to some historical site. Here, I, the past president, and the, uh, the ship, another historical site here. And that's why you took the slave master's name, my great grandfather took the slave master's name. And that's why we are the descendant of the slave master. So none of you, even myself, even Sarah Weatherspoon, were not born into slavery. By the time we were born, there was no slavery. It was abolished. It was canceled. All right? It's canceled. Like that. And we All right. We are here. We see. We see Grand Bassett County. Well, this is uh, the historical site of uh, existence, Liberia, 200 years. We see Bone County. It's also. <laughs> well, this is uh, uh, the Grand Cape Mount County. Oh, very, very beautiful program today. Uh, we see uh, Monserrado. And we see uh, Grand Cook County. Wow. This is uh, Margibi, Margibi County also. We have uh, uh, Bapalu. County. Uh, we have Lofa County, and River says in uh, the uh, 15 County. Well, there's, there's, you see the. Right, this is the ship here, Ship Elizabeth, 1822, that brought uh, the free slip from uh, America, this is the ship that brought our people. This is the ship Elizabeth. And we have other sites here to visit, other historical sites uh, to visit. Just keep on on Vision TV. And we are live here at Provident Island, an historical place where Liberia celebrate a 200 years of Pan African leadership. All right, there you welcome, folks. And this is Vision TV. We are here at the Provident Island on historical place here. With others of uh, our traditions, 
we will go to the Chiefs and uh, add us. Right, we have some uh, some African culture design here. There you watch it, folks. There you have it, folks. <laughs> this is very, very beautiful. We see. Uh, this is very, very beautiful. You see uh, the map of Liberia have been designed, have been carved like this. Very beautiful. And uh, the seal of the Republic of Liberia and all those uh, historical things are also here. We see some... Uh, some African clothes here. This is an African, African clothes. African clothes also here. Uh, we are displaying our heritage. We have our beautiful uh, women here sewing this in a Liberian color. Quoting. Okay, so tell us about this. Uh, and you are here today celebrating uh, the bicentennial, 200 years of existence. That is uh, showing showcasing uh, our heritage here. So tell us about this. This is part of our heritage. This is sporting. When you find here with the key, the supply is like zero. This is what it is. Material before the summer would be like zero. Uh, uh, sorry, material before what made it cool. This place, what it is. So we practice our heritage. But now we don't have any value. It's very nice. Of, especially this woman is not patronizing us. So we just fight hard to do our day business. And we pray that we patronize us today. We are from the Bottles Village Poetry Association. Alright, and there you see Chris in uh, the cocoa tree. Yeah, the cocoa yeah. tree, yeah. Another place. And we will go to the Vero Vero site here and give you the. How you doing? Uh, can you please uh, tell us about this? What does this mean to the audience here? So what does this mean? Is it are you sewing? An African clothes? Yes. So is this clothes uh the uh, uh was the first tradition sewing that the free slave did? Oh uh, there you watch uh our mothers here uh, doing this uh tradition sewing. At that time there was no uh modern last artillery machine and so they have to pull their ideas together right, to pull uh, some little clothes together and then so they could have it on. There is Final Mothers and this is a machine here. I 
Well, there we are, folks. Okay, we have some beautiful, a beautiful African shite here made in Liberia. Some beautiful. We have some beautiful shite here made in Liberia here. There you see, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So how did you uh, uh, manage to, to to put this beautiful African shice together? I'm from Lofa. You from Lofa? From Lofa. Ah oh, wow. I go up to the to stay when I go Lofa. Foya kola ho, vanyama, but a base of foya. And they here, my sister with the enemy president. So we here, as the Nancy Yola here, and the Padilla, what you see there, so. Yeah, I mean, there you see. Go. These are the people who. Every time we make it, it's still making. So from all the way from Lofa. From Lofa, you see. It? And uh, yes. you are here. Did, which one of the machine are you, are you used? The country machine. We do our hand because we get machine. Our hand. We ask the government if they can. You the help with machine. Money must be confirmed. I keep seeing my choir for international. They want our business. They want our market. Man. I saw you are yeah. you are a tradition you are a tradition so uh, yeah. uh, 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 a tailor yeah wow. and so you yeah. saw this beautiful beautiful African suit where our chiefs uh, uh, use there you have it folks this is a uh, yes our African attire here all right thank you we. I hear displaying our country heritage. There you watch this beautiful hat and uh, bags, African bags. Beautiful, very beautiful here. And this is Vision TV. So who got this? Uh, so can you tell us about this? How? That you put this together to form an African bag. I see uh, the Afri African hat and I see West Bear all in African, especially Liberia. Remember that we are displaying our heritage here and everything we do here is all about Liberia. So, how did you? Yeah, as you see, this is uh, I'm Steven Glamour, our cardinal business here around the rehab between the opposite the Dominion Church. Yeah, so these are uh, hand me. Very uh, hand me. Hand it's me. not a machine. Hand me, as you see. Hand me. Yeah, it's from a natural material, which is the bamboo tree. They tap from like piasaba pan when I come out of here also. So this is a bamboo product. It's all hand me. Naturally me, no machine. So let's talk about the hat too, the African hat. Yeah, as you can see, the hat, the hat too is a handmade product. Also, as you can see, just seen it. It's a handmade product. It's a mat. Mat. Yeah, yeah, mat. So you're produced from the mat. Yeah. And also from the same product, which is the baboon, the baboon tree, the cassava tree. It's okay. How you also produce this product also. And the bag you can see, also the same product. From the same uh, trees that we also used to do this, they want like the animal skin, mm -hmm. which is the cow, sometimes goat, sheep. We used to produce this one also, it's a handmade product. Like here, too, you see this uh, country cloth. We wow, produce it's, this. I, I'm seeing a country cloth in a red, yeah. white, and blue. So, how, 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 how? Can you tell me how this appears to be red, white, and blue? 
Then, like, as you can see, keep on down there, you are telling the old man. The, the old lady are the one that can produce these products. They, okay. It's a cloth. They have a way they can produce it. They face sticks from so stick from so you just try to glue that hands and like hands and foot. So that is how they produce these products. Where is it? Where? Where? Why is it? Where is our country? Yeah, and uh, we are celebrating the bicentennial today. 200 years of existence of Pan-African leadership. There we are and uh, displaying our country heritage here. We see some African bags. Everything we will display here is all about Liberia. There is nothing. Uh, what? Wow, very beautiful. Very beautiful. This is an African bag. You can also use this to put your laptop. You can also use it to put your laptop in here. Wow. You have some rope, you can hang it on you and carry it anywhere. If it rain for water won't enter this particular material. Wow. Very beautiful. Water won't enter. All of the way. Okay, thank you. Uh we are still here. Uh the Prophet and Aslan where Liberia celebrate it two hundred years of uh existing uh, Liberia bass and tenor. And uh, we are going to Mayflower, another ship, <laughs> Mayflower and another ship that brought again our settlers to Liberia. Wow, this is this is the Mayflower ship. That's it. Well, this is uh, the Mayflower ship here. The second ship. I gotta take time because you said. Well, this is a the Mayflower ship that brought the second batch of uh, settlers to Liberia. All right, how you doing? Can you tell us? Uh, I seen uh, 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 Christopoli, uh, that means city of Christ. Of Christ. Can you tell about this? 
the brief history? Yes, Crystal Police was a city started by the redeemed Protestant Church of Jesus Christ. And we are remnants of that church. Those that the history identify as free slaves, they were not actually free slaves. They came on a mission of the Lord Jesus Christ to build this nation as the redeemed Protestant Christian nation of Christ that will preach the everlasting gospel from Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 to 13 to the entire world. But they filled that mission in 1824. They broke the covenant with Jesus and established a new nation called Monrovia, Liberia and place the people on a curse. So since 1824, we have been on a curse. But I'm so thankful unto the Lord Jesus that today we have come to a end. So we have come as a remnant of the church. We have come as a remnant of the redeemed protestant church of Jesus Christ to intercede on behalf of our people, to ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us. And today marks 200 years since the Lord Jesus brought the church. But he has been faithful, he has been merciful, he has been kind, and we have it. So we have come to pray for our people and our nation, and we are celebrating the 200th anniversary. Since uh, 2020, the Lord launched the campaign, Crystal Polis for Jesus 2022. And so 2022, we have now come to 2022, that as of this year, the nation will start. We have near my mission, we will start rebuilding the nation by the word of God. And we are now using the name the world gave us, Liberia. We go back to the original name the Lord Jesus gave us, Crystal Polis, the city of Christ, and with the name Christ to set known the nation of Christ. Let me say, the nation is rising. As you will see here, Christ to the rising Christ The nation is now rising. Today we have seen the problem. Our problem is not political, it's not social, it's not even physical, it's a spiritual problem. When they rejected Jesus, the redeemed protesting church, the Lord turned his back. But today, he has had mercy upon us. So we have come to pray. To thank him. We have been fasting and praying for 50 days from November 18, 2021 to January 7, 2022. So today marks the 50th day of our 50 days fast and prayer. The Lord has answered our prayer and the nation is now rising in prosperity and evangelism to preach the gospel. And so you guys are here praying for uh, this nation on this historic site. site. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about this place. Yeah, this place you see Providence Island when the church arrived here in 1822, history tells us that it was called Zodua Island. And the church named it Perseverant Island. But it said no, it is not that our strength. It was by the Lord Jesus Providence. So then they renamed a Providence Island, meaning the Lord have provided the church a land. And they fulfilled the scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. I always love to read this chapter to our people. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, it is believed that the church read this chapter before leaving the United States on a ship in Elizabeth on February 6, 1820. When they departed America, they read this chapter. The chapter says in verse 1, Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statute, his judgment, and his commandment always. But it, there's a passion, there's a passage in the chapter of love. In verses 8 to 11, God said, Therefore, you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which the Lord, which you cross over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come where you sow your seed and water it by food as a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valley which drink water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares, the eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year to the very end. This scripture was fulfilled by the church. This land is a land that flows with milk and honey. We got resources, gold, diamond. We have uranium, we have cobalt, we have bauxite. We have all minerals on the land. That is the word. He said the land flow with milk and honey. And he said the land has hills and valleys. We have a land of hills and valleys. I've traveled the 15 counties. And then he also said that the land is better than the land you came from. This land is better than the United States of America. That's why the word. Then he said what? The land drink water from heaven. This is the only land with the highest rainforest and the highest rainfall in Africa. 
And then he said, Let your eyes, the eyes of the Lord are upon him. No nation colonized us because God said the land for him. He watched over the land. When the French were over the land of the people in Aracos, in Guinea, and the British were in the land over the people of Sierra the Lord Jesus was watching over us here. We are just like Asia, but greater than Asia and America. This is the only redeemed protesting Christian. So we have come today knowing that the word of God is true to appeal to the Lord Jesus to forgive us our sin as a church and pray that the nation will return to Jesus, that will restore Christ to police, his name, and I pray that he will bless us. The nation is rising. This generation is a rising generation. We are even fasting and praying for three days. Today is the second day of our fast and prayer. Tomorrow we'll be ending the three days fast and prayer, and then tomorrow we'll end it. The Lord takes control. So we pray that people, as they come, they see this island is a symbol of Christianity in the world. We are Christians by establishment. All right, thank you. That thank was, you uh, so yeah, we thank you ever so much. Hi, we thank you ever so much. Your name? I am Apostle Donantus S. Nanyanswabu from the Redeemed Protestant Church of Jesus Christ and also the Evangelist of Emmanuel Law. Thank you ever so much. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you guys. Uh, we okay. are still here. This is the Mayflower uh, ship, the second ship here. Vision TV. Here we are, folks. There we are, folks. Uh, the Mayflower ship. Hello, we are the strong survivors that came back home. Huh? We are the strong survivors that came back home after the war. Yeah, we're here. There we are, folks. Students, you're with. Students, you're with. Huh? Wait. All right, folks, that is the Mayflower ship, the second ship that brought the free slave from Europe. And there we are, folks. Alright folks, we are here at the Provident Art Lane. One at a time, you won't go there, you won't go take picture of me, she one at a time. We have students uh, who are visiting this historical site here and want to take pictures here. They are reaching there. This is uh, the historical Aslan, the prevalent Aslan, where free slaves arrived here.
right, we have our guests are arriving. Our guests are arriving. Tanya Fallo Mangil has arrived here at the Prophet Athlan. We see our ministers of uh, state. Honorable not Tanya Fallo Mangil has arrived at the Prophet Island here. All over in sport attire, uh, and it's a colorful event. Yeah, it's taking place right here. So a colorful event. Folks, we are here, and this is Vision Online TV. We are here at the Portland Athlete where Liberia celebrate its 200 years of existence from freedom, Pan African leadership. We have uh, the ministers of uh, state, Honorable Nathaniel Palamangil, uh, see he in a chat with uh, the adults. They're in a little chat with the chiefs and adults. In a chat with the chiefs and adults of uh, Liberia, we have the chiefs and adults from the 50 counties are uh, present here. This is the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, Honorable Natada Fale Mangil, has just arrived at the, the Provident Athlete. <laughs> oh, we have uh, we have Aunt Jenny greeting. Aunt Jenny is also here greeting the Honorable Mangil. The national coordinator, national basket dinner. Happy New Year, baby. Well, we are here at this historical event today. We have also the students here.
that because we have uh, uh, Mr. Mountain Henry Freeman, an African American educator who become acting president of the of the Liberia College, now University of Liberia, in eighteen four in eighteen eighty five. Uh, we go to we go to uh, Angie Brooks, a Liberia, and first African woman to serve as president of the United Nations General Assembly, Liberia Bad Centennial, celebrating. And we go here to remember we are here at the historical site here and we are giving you uh, some historical event here today 200 years of existence we have uh, Daniel B. Wonder the third president of Liberia and we have our traditions uh We have uh, the gate, the guild devil here. Some ladies in beautiful attire, red, white, and blue. Yeah, beautiful. I remember Liberia celebrated it 200 years of existence here at the Providence Ashland. Our guests are now coming in the hall uh, for this program.
Yes. Simon, here, yeah, the gospel musician who sang, Lord, you are the most high. This boy is also here to praise his vocation. Alright, we come to our past and present leader here. Uh, we see uh, President uh, Joseph J. Robert Liberia, first, 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 first president here. There you watch him, the first president of Liberia. And then we go to uh, Daniel B. Wonder. He was the third president. And we go to uh, Stephen Allen Benson, Liberia's second president. We come here to Africa F. Russia. Uh, we come to Anthony W. Gunnell, he was the seventh president. And we go to Hillary R. W. Johnson. And we come all the way here to 
Ata Barclay, the fifth, fifteen presidents of Liberia. And we go to Gary Singh, W. Gibson, the fourth, fourteen presidents of Liberia. We go to uh, William B. Copeland, the thirteen presidents of Liberia. And then we come to here Samuel Kedo, the forty-first presidents of Liberia. 21st president of like the we there you have it and we got to uh willem the top man the nothing president of like the we we come here to william r october the 20th president of liberia and we are here give you this historical past and present president of liberia we come to edwin Buckley. he was the 18th president of liberia and we come to daniel e howard the 16th president of liberia and we come to charge db king charge db king the seventh president of liberia and we coming along giving you this uh, historical presidents of liberia we have here Africa and Russia, the 10 presidents of Liberia, and we have here Joseph J. Chisman, the 12th president of Liberia. We have Hilary W. Johnson, 11th president of Liberia. And then we go here all the way, all the way, all the way, and we come to the 24th president of Liberia, uh, who is Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is also here. And we come to uh, Moses Ebla. Moses Ebla, who succeeded uh, President Taylor. And we have Chais Gange Taylor, Chais Dakpana Gange Taylor, the 22nd president of Liberia here. And we come here to our current president. President of the Republic of Liberia, the 25th President of Liberia, Honorable His Excellency Dr. George Fokitong Kapita Manin Wea, President of the Republic of Liberia. He is the 25th President of Liberia. His Excellency Dr. George Manning Fokteklon Tapeta Usmani Wea is also here. And this is Vision Online TV, folks. We have all of the delegates uh, coming in. So tell us about this uh, our bus centennial that you are witnessing. So how about it? How you feel today? The Liberia is celebrating 200 years of existence uh, from a Pan-African leadership. As you know the history, how Liberia came to be. So tell us a brief about this bus centennial program that you are here today. So it's an honor to come to and celebrate um, our 200 years of existence since we repatriated Africa, but it's also um, a pleasure that we met people here and they were able to welcome us 
Yes. Oh, so people were here? Yes, so wow. people were here. That are fact that we should now reach out. So it's important that we all come together to celebrate the unity that Liberia is enjoying today. And take away the Congo and Native extend as one, one family or one people to build Mama Liberia. And I'm so glad to see all the pictures here of my grandma, Spakoko, my grandpa, Daniel B. Mona. It's really a joyous time. All right, thank you ever so much. And now we have uh, the defense minister and the, the chief of staff. I also present here. We have uh, I Major General Dano and uh, the chief of staff of uh, the Armed Forces of Liberia, Honorable Prince Wa Johnson, is also present here. We have our guests coming in. We have our foreign diplomatic co also coming in here. This is a unique day here. We see the honorable ministers here. I tell us, uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about uh, this uh, Boston General Honorable Josephine Davis and uh, the man Honorable Adam Wisha here? So tell us about this event. Thank you so much. I will come in there and I will just conclude. We are excited to be here today. 200 years of existence, cause for celebration. From 1822 up to 2022. We are excited to be here today because they signify that our forefathers paid the price. Today, this country is not here because there were traditional people who had this way on them. We were born. Until the free slave came to Nigeria. So, and other compatriots. So, there were people on the ground already? Yes. There were people here when the free slave came? That held this ground. It was because of them, so this, 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 this nation is called Nigeria. And this nation is here because of them. Because of them, we are here today. 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 And this is not about politics, this is about celebrating our existence. So we want to say to every Liberian in and out of Liberia, today see this day as your, the 200 years of existence. The 200 years your forefather paid the price for. So we are excited to be here. And we know today we will listen to a lot of this story about this country. And you have a fire, but they say you have to sit on the old man. We are the new man, so we are going to set on the old man today and plan the new man and make sure that our country make impact. The Thank you so much. Public. Thank you so much as we go to the Army Minister. Army Minister, how do you do, sir? Well, uh, thank you. I'm okay and um, I'm glad to be here. So can you tell us about this event today? How, how happy are you? Well, like we are celebrating uh, 200 years of existence in Boston Center. And I think it is important that we, we celebrate this day in memory of the 
the strength of our forefathers, the strength of our ancestors, those of our people who were warriors, men and women who fought on the trenches in our own native land to defend the territory band of this country. I can remember during the transatlantic slave trade when Africans were forced to go to Europe to welcome plantation for the Europeans. Yes, from our brothers and sisters, our, our people left this so, left so when they went to America. When they came back 1820, 1821, on the ship for Elizabeth, they met their counterparts there, they met their traditional brothers and sisters, who were also continuing the territorial supremacy of the land. When you want to talk about this South of course, that he was one of the greatest warriors in Liberia. What about the one Tuan Nimle? Tuan Nimle said our people will not be coerced to pay more taxes. In so far, they are not giving economic opportunity. What do you want to talk about the role play of the role play by Long Peter? Or you want to, or you want to look at the, the role play by, 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 by great men and women who also struggle to have this particular land where it is. So this day is a reflection about the cultural and historical experiences that Liberia has been able to share over, over the years. And today we have 200 years of existence. But what is more prominent, prominent, prominent about this history is that Liberia as a country was being able to give other countries independence. We can remember when South Africa was fighting against apartheid. It was a period that took away into the independence liberation struggle. Where Nelson Mandela, Water Susu, where Oliver Tamo, and the rest of the guys on the banner of the African National Congress. In, 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 Namibia, in Namibia, when the institution called SAPO was also struggling against, against the Black Horse Association forces, they told Liberia to get support from Namibia to the town of the South African West, South, South West African West. So Liberia is, is the mother of the all African nations. That's why this day is very much important. So before we arrived at this stage, there were battles. There were the twin battles, the twin battle of 1822, the battle of 40 and the battle of Tahoe. There were battles between the natives and the battle between the American Liberians. But in the midst of that, we were arguing for common ground, we were arguing for coexistence. There were people like Dwan Nimla Kifon, there were people like Dean Kwe. So what about John Kese? Say? So what about John Kese? John Kese and the rest of the people. Don't go to people, Thomas Buchanan. All of these American Liberians. So they came and they met the native people on ground and they probably asked them and together. There were battles here, there were struggles here. Men have to rise up to the occasion and say, we must defend the territorial boundaries of this country. This is why Liberia remains the most historical country ever in the history of the African continent. So we are pleased to be here in our regalia, in our pan Africanness, our paraphernalia, representing the spirit of our. Ancestors. That's why we are here. We get reminded. We pay homage to 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 I'm so proud that we can celebrate this day. So our celebration is not to tell you how many, how many back of rest we have in our houses, no. It's not to tell you how many cars we have to show, no, not to parade, up, up less, no. It's to tell the world and the rest of the African continent that this country called Liberia plays a pivotal role in the African liberation struggle. And that's why as revolutionary as children of uh, pan Africanism struggle, we are very conscious and very aware that uh, the role we play and the role we play in the retention of the African continent. That's why the like, is so much greater in terms of it's so rich in terms of its culture, it's so rich in terms of its culture, it's so rich in terms of its song. You can see our traditional people here, those were the those were the there was a garment. Those were the paraphernalia. Those were, those were the mosaic. Our people wore. And this is what makes Liberia very peculiar. That's what, that's what makes Liberia very good. This is the essence of the Liberian culture. This is the struggle of our people years of existence. So we say, among Africa, I went to the struggle continue. All right, thank you ever so much. That was the Honorable Minister. <laughs> All right, we have the American ambassador. It's uh, will be coming.
the American ambassador will soon be here. I see the Honorable Minister of Mama Sikabal is already here jubilating for this. So how do you do, madam? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. So tell us about this joyful day today. Uh, I see you already very unique, very beautiful. Uh -huh. uh, very unique and very beautiful. So tell us about this Bicentennial Day today. Are Thank we celebrating you. our history? Independence? Are we celebrating our history? Of course. We are celebrating not just the history. How we appreciate where you to attach unique to our history. All right, all right unique we are history. celebrating our unique history. The unique now of our history. It's just amazing. And I'm excited to be here with different people from different parts of the world. Liberians and people who are not Liberians. All right, thank you ever so much. Thank you ever so much. That was a uh, uh, minister from Agenda and Children Protection, Minister Mamasi Kabade. There we are, beautiful African, beautiful. I see some people are purchasing, purchasing this beautiful African band here. Purchasing this beautiful African band. Madam, how are you? So tell us about this beautiful African band that you produce. I have my well, I'm from the Liberian. Oh, from the Liberian to sit on peace. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. There where we are folks.
of Liberia, His Excellency Dr. George Amanawia will be arriving here soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Republic of Liberia has arrived here at this president as land, uh, celebrating the bicentennial, 200 years of his existence and freedom. of the house is already here.
chief and adults, the chief and adults of the Philippine Mountains are also present here. Jesus and power. Folks, we are still here as we await the president.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the president. We welcome in the president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Dr. Josh Mana. We have land on this provident as land celebrating the bicentennial. Is the president that is the president there? The president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Dr. George we have touched down the president of the to commemorate Okay. 
Where you want to go? Where you want to go?
His Excellency Dr. George M. Tanawia, Madam Vice President Dr. Jewel Howard Taylor, the Speaker Dr. Buffer Chimas, members of the 54 legislature, the Senate Pro Tempore, Honorable Albert Chie, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Leger Julius Rainey, Minister of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, and Chairman of the Bicentennial Steering Committee, Co-Chairman and Honorable Minister, Foreign Affairs, D. Mark Tuna Member of the Steering Committee, Civil Society Organization, and the Fourth Estate. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, exactly 200 years, the settlers from the great United States of America and on the shores of the great land of liberty as a result of being repatriated from the United States of America. They have had the long history of turbulence, perseverance, and the profound journey to find a place for the settlement. Our traditional leaders, our religious leaders, our young people, our mothers, and our citizens alike, and the distinguished resident of the historic city of Morovia. Let me give you one thing You're shopping on As such, the Provident Island, a historic island that has come to know as a gift of God, among all those challenges that they face as settlers from the Shabro to joining along the Maserado River, we all have come to realize that their ultimate goal was to find a sanctuary. His Excellency Dr. George M. Weir, Vice President Chief Joe Havotero, Honorable Chairman Ledger Rainey, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely filled with excitement. Have the distinguished pleasure as the mayor of Morovia to officially welcome all Liberians from the diaspora and as well Liberian residing here to this official launch of the bicentennial and foreigners residing in here. As we are fully convinced that this year marks the bicentennial program, this utterly demonstrates how symbolic significance an occasion that is principally geared towards reuniting Liberians from all across the globe, promoting cultural values, heritage, and reenacting the spirit of Pan Africanism. For too long, our country has the, con the conversation of unity, reconciliation, unification, but are yet to fully realize what it actually means to be united as Liberians. But I am quite convinced that with this government of His Excellency Dr. M. Weir, George Manor Weir, who is an embodiment and a paradigm of reconciliation and unification, will have come into reality the true significance of peace and unity of this country. I cannot overly or easily emphasize that this bicentennial with a full all Liberian home and abroad, that the movement to reconcile their differences, promote national unity and peace. This is not just a singular event for us, but an event that will lead us to achieve the goal, the goal of unity and reconciliation. I am therefore truly pleased, as the mayor of Morovia and as well as the co-chair on the steering committee, to officially welcome all of you to the great city of Morovia, a city that is named in honor of America's fifth president, James Monroe. This historical event, which marks 200 years of existence, it is a reminiscence of how far we come as a nation. With this event, 
Liberian can now chart a new path for national discourse and unity. A new beginning on reconciliation, a new path towards sustainable growth and development. I do firmly believe that in the union, strong success is sure. We cannot fail with God above, our rights will all over prevail. Thank you ever so much. For the long man, I gotta be even bigger, man. Let's put it together. As we continue with the program, let me make this short announcement. You know, our traditional leaders, chiefs and elders, are an integral part of our history. They are the, the founders of our nation also. And so when they came a while ago, we had a special place to prepare for them, it wasn't ready. So we're going to make sure that now that the place is ready, we can bring them over. No. Chief Zanzan Kawa and the, the core of traditional leaders, please bear with us. Before we go into the historical relevance and context of why we're here today, let me just say this. About 45 years ago, I attended a program in Plebo Sonic District, Maryland County. It was the graduation ceremony for one of the senior high schools. And the keynote speaker was the city mayor at the time. That night, he told his wife that he wanted to wear a navy blue coat suit. So they put the, the speech in a navy blue coat suit. They chose to put in a navy blue coat suit. But in the night, navy blue and black are the same. So they put it in a black coat suit. Next morning, my man John and Decker went to the program, introduced the city mayor, the man came up. As we are here today, so we came here today, this distinguished gathering here today, our one and only people here today, no, no, no speech. My people are bigger. You're the quiet be singing. Jim, I told you all last night to put my team. So when you come here, I'll call you, make sure you get your speech. Oh. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasing duty and honor to call on the podium one of Liberia's distinguished intellectuals and academician from the University of Liberia, Dr. William Ezra Allen, who is um, a professor on history and of his, he's the chairman of the subcommittee on history, seconded to us by the University of Liberia, and he will give us the historical and relevant context to why we are here today, Dr. Allen. And you see that Allen bringing a B? No, we are here today. Excellency Dr. George Manek Weir, President of the Republic of Liberia, honorable government officials here, members of the diplomatic corps, our distinguished guests, religious leaders, head of the National Traditional Council, fellow Liberians, Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank His Excellency President Weir 
for the decision to commemorate January 7, 1822. Especially for doing this here on Providence Island. This piece of land represents a special place in Liberian history. As we know, it was here 200 years ago that a small group of free black Americans landed. Their journey had actually begun two years earlier when 86 of them departed the United States and traveled to Chevro Island in Sierra Leone. Many died from unfamiliar diseases. The survivors lingered until 1822 when they arrived here. We are all familiar with their story of enslavement and discrimination. From about the 1500s to the mid 1800s, an estimated 12 million Africans were captured and loaded on ships for the voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. Some were probably captured from these very shores. The 10 million that survived the dangerous crossing across the Atlantic before reaching North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. When they arrived, they produced agricultural crops such as sugar, cutting, and tobacco on one of the most dehumanizing conditions. The free blacks that landed here were descendants of those enslaved Africans from the present United States. A small population had acquired their freedom. Some were born to mothers that had been freed. Others bought their freedom. Still, many more fled from the South and went to the North, where freedom from slavery was gradually being abolished. Though free, these free, free blacks still encountered discrimination. They came here in search of a home that would provide equality. And they established one. They established the Republic of Liberia, the first independent republic on the shores of Africa. So today, we proudly remember their sacrifice, their suffering, and their fortitude. As we recall this day, we are in essence remembering all of us, the Liberian people. We are descendants of all the people that came together here. Three groups that were here in 1822, and one that came later. So our convergence here as a people began here. Providence Island represents that beginning. So I have chosen as my topic, Providence Island, Liberia's enduring legacy. The four groups are the free blacks from the United States, the indigenous people, the Congo people, and the Barbadian immigrants. All of them were here in 1822 or came shortly thereafter. I will therefore spend a little more time on the lesser known histories of the Congos and the Barbadians. So I begin, the indigenous people. The indigenous people comprise Liberia's 17 ethnic groups. According to the census of 2008, they, they added an, another indigenous group, the Sapo. So we went from 16 ethnic groups to 17 ethnic groups according to the census of 2008. According to the mostly neglected archaeological studies, the indigenous people have been here for about 3,000 years. The evidence is based on artifacts or the old things that archaeologists found. They include tools made from rocks, fragments of pottery, we used to call them the country part. 
as well as burned oil palm kernels. These were found in caves in Lofa and Nima County. There were some of the indigenous people who had been here for over 3,000 years who ceded this land to the free blacks that the free blacks occupied in 1822. In short, when the free blacks arrived, they met the indigenous people. The indigenous people had occupied Dozo, the name of this island, long before it became Providence Island in 1822. The Congos. Who are the Congos? The Congos are known in the early records by several names, including recapture Africans and recaptives. They were freed by American Navy from slave ships and resettled in Liberia. A number of recaptives landed here with the free blacks in 1822. In fact, one was killed in a battle in 1822 between the settlers and the indigenous people. The last group of recaptives arrived in, in the early 1860s. By then, the total 5,722. Although some recaptives came from the West Africa, the majority say they came from the Kingdom of the Congo, so we began to call them here the Congo people. The story of Daniel is typical of the Congos. Daniel was a teenager, and he was among 700 mostly young people that had been freed by the American Navy ship Yorktown in 1845 or 1846. The ship was called Ponce. It had over 700 young people who were being taken to slavery in the New World, in the United States. Well, the United States had abolished the slave trade. So taken to Brazil, taken to Central America, and taken to the Caribbean when they were liberated. They were distributed to prominent families of settlers and Christian missionaries. Whatever his previous name, the young boy was renamed Daniel Bacon by his guardian. And the name was in honor of a prominent American who Daniel probably never met. Though Daniel slowly adopted to his new home, Liberia, he learned English. So he cried many times for his large family, including his siblings. Roughly 15 years after his arrival here, probably in 1858, Daniel found his brother on Crown Hill. They hugged and cried with joy. His brother had also been rescued from a slave ship called the Echo. The Congos and their descendants blended well into the Liberian society. 
they found that many Congo towns in Liberia, the lesser known ones are, include Matadi, located west of Jean Springs Free Airport, Matadi Estate. According to the late JCN Howard Sr., a descendant of Congos, Matadi was founded shortly after 1861 by a Congo man named Matadi. Peaceville is also another Congo town. It was established around 1864 or 1865 and named after Jean Springs Peen, who supported the settlement and became president. The Congos and the recaptives or recaptives even bonded closer with the descendants of the black Americans. Both groups are popularly known as the Congos. The Barbadian immigrants. 346 Barbadian immigrants arrived here in 1865. They, like the free blacks from the United States, were descendants of Africans enslaved in Barbados. Even though they were free by the British in the 1830s, the Barbadians also faced racial discrimination. Their joining here began when newly elected President Joseph Jenkins Roberts visited Barbados in 1848. He met a group of Barbadians who expressed their desire to immigrate to Liberia, telling President Roberts, and I quote, we have received information of the establishment of your independence. Another demonstration to the world that the descendants of Africans are now inferior in civilization. Quotation close. It was this idea of an independent black republic that inspired the Barbadians to come here to the promised land, Liberia, in 1865. I will tell you a story about a Barbadian family I found in the archives. The, the story of the Barbadian family gave us an idea of how desirous they were to immigrate. A, a Mr. Tate, T-A-I-T, and his family of nine apparently decided to leave Barbados a month earlier than the rest. They used all the funds on the trip and arrived in Sierra Leone with only $40. Mr. Tate then used what was left, say his last dollars, to rent a boat for the journey to Liberia. This was in April 1865. The rainy season. Rainy season. Rainy season. Rainy the rainy season and the boat had no cover so in quotation for nine days and nights the family endured the harsh weather they landed in the promised land Liberia wet weary and hungry according to the archives the legislature gave Mr. Tate $100 and 50 acres of land Mr. Tate and his fellow Barbadians Mr. Tate and his fellow Barbadians who blend within the Liberian society, although more closely 
with the free blacks and the Congos. These four groups, the various indigenous people, the black Americans, the Congos, and the Barbadians have forged a common Liberian identity. However, that identity was fragile. It splintered in 1980 and during 14 intermittent years of civil war. Our presence here today is to commemorate the return of the free blacks who founded this republic under very difficult conditions. As we observe this bicentennial, we must also recall the other groups I mentioned that were here in 1822 or came later. Over the last 200 years, they have converged to form a Liberian identity amidst cooperation and division. Today, we remember the origins of our common Liberian identity, represented by Providence Island, the enduring legacy. It is my hope, it is my hope that as we commemorate this spicy channel throughout this year, more concrete examples of our national unity will be manifested. Thank you and congratulations to Liberia on its bicentennial. Thank you, thank you. Let's give Dr. Ali a big hand clap. That was uh, a snapshot of our rich, enviable, and historical cultural heritage. Liberia, we have something to be proud about. We must always walk with our heads high. A union strong, a long style forever. A long may float over land and over sea, desert it no never, uphold it forever. At this time, while we await the cultural ambassador, the cultural display, and um, the 1822 arrival from the Liberia Crusader for Peace and the Liberia Movie Union, headed by Ambassador, Cultural Ambassador Judy Andy. Let us pause for a moment and look around us and see the great view of Providence Island. This land, this patch of land, signifies the beginning of 200 years of a long journey, sometimes bitter, but many times sweet. And we must remember the good old days as always relishing that in Union Strong, success is sure. Ambassador Andy and the cultural display, are you ready? Okay, let's put our hands together. His Excellency Dr. George Manewia, my president. The ambassador of the U.S. Embassy, he credited to Monrovia. I'm recognizing my president because he represents Liberia, and I'm recognizing the ambassador because he represents the United States here, and other protocol of respectfully observe, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We are going to bring on stage today the beauty, the arts, and the richness of Liberian culture and heritage. We're going to bring talents from Liberia, from the West, the East, the North and the South. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the movie Union! So long time ago, far, far away from the shores of Virginia, they came sailing on the oceans, fighting him against the ocean wave and against the creature of the earth, struggling for days and nights, longing for a place to belong, longing for a place to be free, a place
place that they will feel welcome, a place they will call home for themselves. And yes, at the west coast of Africa, there lies the Dosua land. A land so beautiful, a land that is fertile, a land full of green pastures, a land who is beauty. It's beyond your imagination. But as the Caucasians, along with the Negroes, arrive with their ships, fear struck in the hearts and minds of the indigenous, of the sons, the mothers, the fathers and daughters of that land. Who could blame them? They have lived in peace and harmony for so long, but yet frightened at the sight of these people in their ships. Will they be accepted? Ladies and gentlemen, will the Caucasians along with the Negroes be accepted? Can they be accepted? Let's find out as we call on the Liberal Movie Union to portray this play.
I saw the GB. What happened? No fighting. No fighting. You wake up our land. Our corona. The better. You, you need me, me need Chief Zolo Duma. No, you, your name. This is Chief Lord Peter. What is your name? You name Miss Zonduma, Long Peter, you name Ilanis. You, Chief, Chief, me, Big Chief, what you want? You can't take we people back? You can't take we? No, um, that's not good. We have come for the land that we actually requested. Land? Yes. This land? Yes. Brother? Yes. We, we don't want land. You don't take us land. Go back. I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the. I pass land. I pass land. I pass land. This land. We don't get land. This land. For us. All over the place. See this land? Our land. Those who are land. Our land. We don't want.
People talk. Je pona aje na. Abu yendwe. Anu banu. Papa polebo. Ibiji. Brana. Abe blaku bala. You. We take you. We want you brothers. The chief said, you people, welcome here. We gave you land, and you stay. All of us, one people. Me, brother, go. Me, brother, go. Fernando Po. Me not see brother. Me, wife, go. Me not see wife. Me, oh. Go to me. You bring my brother. Rabba, stop down. You bring my brother. See me, brother. We take you. We want. All right. Oh. Thank you so much, Kenny. And I'm here. My, uh, I brought uh, a smoke fish. Fish? Yes. And I brought uh, uh, tobacco. Tobacco? And I brought um, cigar. And I, this is the wine. This is the wine. And this is the tobacco. We taste, we taste wine. Now, Kara, Yabinagia, Omo, Dewa, Wanya, Nia, Opana, Yaji. Wine, strong wine, thank you. What is this? Thank you. You welcome. We are the human arm. the brother. The chief says you can have this land. You are welcome. We are all one. Wow. All right, with um, peace. Thank you so with much. Peace. Thank but you. There is something else. Yeah. I will like you to sign on this paper. All right? Yeah. Hey, sign. Yes. Sister, sit down.
are celebrating the birth of a child all the way from Lofa County. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and we are moving.
Excellency Michael A. McCarthy, Ambassador to the United States of America, accredited here like Liberia. Ambassador McCarthy. I see the ambassador coming, you get his speech? We don't want to have a little bit of speech. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Rennie. Could we give another round of applause to cultural ambassador Julie Andy? the Liberia Crusaders for Peace and Liberia Movie Union. Thank you for that performance. Your Excellency President Weah, Speaker of the House, President Pro Tem, other members of the legislature, members of the judiciary, traditional elders, religious leaders, my colleagues in the diplomatic corps, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by expressing how much of an honor it is to be standing here on Providence Island 
exactly 200 years after the first wave of free black Americans arrived at this hallowed location. There have been so many incredible individuals over the last 200 years who built the relationship between the United States and Liberia. I am humbled to be the one to mark this historic day on behalf of my country. We should pause to remember all those who made sacrifices, whether newcomers to this land or indigenous people. We should also acknowledge that this is a nation of people drawn from many roots. And we should celebrate the fact that one of Liberia's treasures is its tremendous diversity. I arrived in Liberia one year ago yesterday. And what an incredible year it has been. And that's despite our ongoing efforts to stop the spread of and protect all people from COVID-19. Our shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder efforts with the Ministry of Health and so many others has led to the vaccination of more than one million Liberians. Yay! That's something to celebrate. But it is not a number to be satisfied with. It's essential to create a safe environment for members of the Liberian diaspora and other visitors who are expected to visit during this momentous year. We all want this pandemic to be over. Let's continue to ramp up our joint efforts. And looking beyond 2022, we can work together to make Liberia more attractive to visitors and investors. There is such a compelling story to tell. One that we should not forget is rooted in Liberia's unique journey as a democracy. We like to say that democracies, by their nature, are a constant work in progress. In 1822, the American democracy, while ambitious, was not yet a fair society. Slavery would not be abolished for another four decades. And free black Americans, while nominally citizens, did not yet enjoy the civil rights they were promised under our Constitution. So it should not be a surprise that in 1820, 86 free black Americans chose to board a ship sailing for a new life in West Africa. To think that 200 years ago today, some of that original group, along with others that followed in their footsteps, established a settlement right here on Doza Island. Consider the bravery and hope of those individuals, men, women, children, to embark on something as ambitious as creating a new country. It is inspiring, to say the least. But also, remember the challenging circumstances that led to such a leap of faith. As we commemorate this anniversary, we believe that it is important to have a robust scholarly debate about the historical decisions and actions taken by our ancestors, so as to inform future generations and bring about a mutual understanding of what happened and, importantly, why it happened. We must live this history and we must learn from it. 200 years later, America is not perfect, 
still not perfect, but it is undoubtedly better, fairer. And our place in the world, due to its resilience and adaptability, we have generations of ambitious and brave and hopeful Americans to thank for it. Liberia, like the United States, like every country, has both a difficult past and many generations of citizens who tried to correct those previous wrongs, creating what we believe is a better nation today. Not every country, however, has a physical space as emblematic of its history as Providence Island. Paraphrasing Dr. Williams, I quote him as he says, Providence Island epitomizes not only a pivotal moment of black nation building and sovereignty, but a critical space of conflict and cooperation between indigenous Liberians and peoples of African descent, previously separated by nation for many generations. All of that on 11 acres of land. Look around. Take a moment and consider the 200 year experience between those who were already here in this territory. The Pele, the Basa, the Mano, the Gio, the Kru, the Grebo, the Kran, the Vai, the Gola, the Mandingo, the Mende, the Kisi, the Bandi, the Loma, the Sapo, the Day, and the Bele, including people of multiple faiths. The contrast between them and those that came here, the Americans and the Barbadians, and their descendants. As this bicentennial commemoration of the joining of these peoples, of our peoples, kicks off, there's so much to be proud of, just as there's so much to continue to improve upon. We represent two of the oldest continuous republics in the history of the world. And we, all of us together, share a unique history paired with common democratic values. And here I'm going to begin to sound a little bit like the Speaker of the House Chambers. The first president of Liberia, President J.J. Roberts, was born in Norfolk, Virginia, the son of two free, African, free Americans who moved to Monrovia at the age of 20. The second president, Stephen Allen Benson, was born in Cambridge, Maryland, the son of free-born African-American parents. He arrived soon after the first settlement was established in 1822, when he was only eight years old. Presidents Daniel Warner and Garrison Gibson were also from Maryland. Presidents James Sprig Payne and Anthony Gardner were also from Virginia. Presidents Alfred Russell and William Coleman were from Kentucky. President Edward Roy was born in Ohio, and President James Smith was from South Carolina. Our shared history is literally written into the geography. From Monrovia to Maryland County to cities in between, such as Buchanan, named after the cousin of U.S. President James Buchanan, Greenville, named for a Mississippi Delta planter, and Harper, named after a U.S. Senator. Bushrod Island is named after the favorite nephew of George Washington. Today, our collective goal is the same as it was 200 years ago. 
a prosperous and self-reliant Liberia. And we know that the path to that ambition is through a commitment to democracy that ensures every voice is heard, a commitment to rule of law that supports freedom and investment, and a commitment to the Liberian people themselves, their health, education, and other needs. Just, week, just weeks ago, our two presidents joined with other democratic leaders to demonstrate this commitment for the first installment of the Summit of Democracy. Both President Biden and President Wea pledged to a series of interventions in each of our respective countries to defend against authoritarianism, address and fight corruption, and promote respect for human rights. A year from now, we will gather again to review those initiatives. Here in Liberia, the United States government is one year into a long-term collaboration with the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs, and Tourism, the World Monument Fund, and the universities of Virginia and Liberia on ways to preserve and reuse this island for future generations. And extending beyond this island, Providence Island, I urge you all to consider establishing a historic quarter consisting of the Palm Grove Cemetery, President Roberts Executive Mansion and other preserved government's buildings on Ashman Street, and the historical churches. And allocating the resources for preservation, beautification, and identification of these landmarks and the neighborhoods that connect them. This area has the potential to attract visitors from across the globe and spark a boom in the tourism economy. Most importantly, it ensures that the next generation of Liberians are well informed and proud of our one-of-a-kind shared history. In closing, I would like to quote Liberian author Cyrus L. Gray, Jr., who wrote three years ago, although Liberia today is not the same as Liberia in 1847, the love of liberty brought us here is still a fitting synopsis of the purpose of Liberia if we establish some context. Liberia still clings to its name, paraphrased as the land of the free, without reservation from any sector of society. Us, us in the maxim, denotes the collective estate of all blacks. And here represents the black nation in contrast to a place. By this definition, the love of liberty brought all black people under the umbrella of the first African nation state in an era of Western domination. Our preservation initiatives and our joint year of action to renew our democracies is a worthy tribute to recognizing the ambitions of our forefathers and foremothers, each of whom envisioned a republic based on the inherent power of its people. These commitments celebrate all we are going to achieve in the next 200 years while recognizing both the dreams as well as the sacrifices and missteps of the last 200 years. 
thank you once again for the opportunity to speak before you on this historic day. Together we have a lot to be proud of as we prepare the next generations for their turn to lead our great countries. Thank you very much. Another round of applause. Thank you, His Excellency Ambassador McCarthy, for the sumptuous food of thought for us, both of us, Liberia and the United States, as we journey together in commemorating 200 years of our common interests. Let me also inform you the Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Liberia, Madam Ellen Johnson Salif, will not be here today. She sends a message that she's bereaved. She lost her son, and she's mourning that. So we join her in this national effort to say heartfelt condolences to her and her family. That said, we move on. As you can see in your program, the performance of the official bicentennial song. As we wait for the musicians to come up or to begin to tune the, the instruments, let me say I got a text message. From, my, from one of my beginning around here. He said, but the ambassador was calling all the different tribes. I hear my tribe. I said, but where are you going to He said, Bele. I said, but the man said Bele. He said, no, that is Siri. <laughs> where are we? He said, oh, but they my tribe on a different track. <laughs> so, Mr. Ambassador, I spoke on your behalf. You did call your tribe. So the ambassador said, Bele. But well, actually, you have problem, eh? <laughs> you ready? To the cabaret. You ready? You ready? <laughs> the Lone Star forever, the Lone Star forever. The law may float over land and over sea. Deserted no never. A bullet forever. Shout for the Lone Star banner. Oh, yeah. Yes, who can tell me that we're Lone Star playing? Let's get in. Your heart can be there. Okay, are you vexed? Go in the poker play, man. So I said, Lusa is going to jump up. Oh, Lusa. When they beat it, it's a look at there. Every day that they wear, they wear. You ready? His Excellency, Dr. George Marewea, we have a total number of 52 artists, but we're not going to do that song today. We will do, in Liberian style, Linkwa Franca, which is Kolokwa. And the 52 will be performed in February the varial vernaculars of Liberia and the standard English. But today we will do the Kolokwa. Liberia, the land of return, freedom, Pan-African leadership. Yeah. 
Steering committee, we got to rally the funds to make sure that song goes to studio and go far and wide. 
think we got to play there to the diaspora at home there also. Every day the radio stations have to play this song because it rekindles national unity, reconciliation, peace, and oneness. On this note, I turn over to the protocol of the foreign ministry. Mr. Speaker, and members of the National Legislature, Mr. Chief Justice and Associate Justices present, members of the Cabinet, the Doyen and members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, international organizations, our invited guests and partners, heads of autonomous agencies, business houses, higher institutions of learning, our prelates, our traditional leaders, students, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and a pleasing duty to call to the podium for the message on unity and reconciliation. His Excellency, Dr. George Ramia, President of the Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, I sometimes wonder why a sergeant. If you are not a sergeant today, I don't know when you'll be a sergeant. We saw a display of how our people came together, and I want to congratulate. Young Liberians that put the great act together for you to see emotional act. I will even cry in my seat. And you all sat there, you sat there, and just to clap for them, we heard the clapping maybe 15 percent. So I just want to do something for them to so appreciate them. Everyone that's seated here and around, you stand it already. Stand up. This is 2022 to appreciate people when they do something for you. So give them standing ovation for two for one minute. Standing ovation. This is how we appreciate people. Ambassador McCarthy, I hope I did not violate your human rights. Speaker of Chambers, 
members of the 54th legislature here present, the Chief Justice and Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of Liberia, members of the judiciary, the Dean and members of the Cabinet, the Chief of Staff and Gallant Men and Women of the Armed Forces of Liberia, and other members of the security apparatus, other officials of government here present, the Dawn and the members of the Diplomatic Council of Court, the special representatives of the United Nations Secretary General, the heads of international organizations, the heads of political parties and civil society organizations, Presidents and chairpersons of youth and student groups, president and chairpersons of women and organizations, members of the business community, especially markets, women and men, prelates, members of the clergy, and heads and members of religious institutions. Chiefs, elders, and traditional leaders, heads of educational institutions, members of the folk estate, distinguished guests, fellow Liberians, ladies, and <laughs> You don't have a clap for me. What's the clap for them? I'm happy. Greetings from the modern of our land, His Excellency Manakla Maluya, who is not here with us today due to our son injuring Timothy Weya. So wish you a happy new year. Please join me in a moment of silence for those of our compatriots who have succumbed to death as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please stand and join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. May the soul rest in perfect peace. Today is an important day in our history. We are here to commemorate what occurred here 200 years ago. On January 7, 1822, a group of free blacks, American, from the United States arrived here on this island after a difficult and hazardous journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Their joy was great after surviving the perilous passage which they attributed to God's divine providence. And so the name this island, Providence Island. They have returned to the land of their ancestors following four centuries of enslavement and bondage. Forever yearning to live as a free people, they have now returned to the Africa of their roots. 25 years later, on July 26, 1847, these settlers, as they came to be known, established the Republic of Liberia as the first independent republic on the African continent. As we recall that momentous day, we must also remember the indigenous population which was already here in 1822, centuries before, 
comprising the 17 ethnic groups of Liberia, as well as other others who came afterwards, such as the Congos and the Barbadians. Today, as descendants of these diverse groups of people, we are all citizens of Liberia with a common national identity. This commemoration must therefore bring us closer together and strengthen our national unity even as we recognize and celebrate our diversity. Fellow Liberians, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have been invited by the National Bicentennial Steering Committee to speak to you today about national unity and reconciliation. Their choice, for, their choice of the topic for this occasion is appropriate because during this Bicentennial year, we must redouble our efforts to promote unity amongst all Liberians wherever they may reside, and encourage all to make meaningful contributions to the nation-building tax of our country. In Liberia, national unity and reconciliation is the cornerstone to all national development efforts, and it is the basis for combating all forms of discrimination and exclusion. As a country which has emerged from a divided past and the recent civil war, it is our only option for survival and continuity as a nation. We must therefore continue to embrace Attendance of national unity as we move forward, together towards becoming a reconciled and democratic nation whose citizens are at peace with themselves, their neighbor, and the world. Redefining Liberia's identity and bearing a shared sense of nationalism should be at the center of reconciliation in Liberia. The model for genuine national unity and reconciliation should be inspired and funded on positive cultural values, citizenship building, good governance, economic empowerment, and the rule of law. As we commemorate our national bicentennial, let us recollect memories of all of our ancestors, their favorite ways of life, their respected history and culture, and the way they coexist with each other as long lost brothers and sisters return to the land to form a unique and united country. As Liberians from diverse ethnic groups, religious beliefs, a region, we must continue to coexist peacefully as one united Liberian nation in accordance with our constitution. We, as Liberians, can only promote national unity and reconciliation by living together in peace and harmony. We can also promote national unity and reconciliation through exercising tolerance by accepting each other's ways of life. In a country such as ours, Liberia, there are so many people with different cultures and traditions which influence their ideologies about life and about how to approach things. We 
must accept and accord every person the respect he or she deserves in matters relating to differences in ideology and understanding. Another major tool in promoting national unity and reconciliation is patriotism. This indeed is the bedrock of our national foundation because when there is love for one's nation, such love will engender a spirit of brotherhood, sisterhood, and fraternity among us as citizens of Liberia, our common country. Let us vigorously denounce and combat acts writings and utterances which are intended to promote any kind of discrimination, intolerance, or lack of justice, all of which are counterproductive to the achievement of national unity and reconciliation. Fellow Liberians, in fostering genuine national unity and reconciliation, we must let go of the past, embrace the present within the context of our diversity, and give birth to a future with unity, peace, reconciliation, and sustainable development as our imperative agenda. In this public manner, and in the spirit of national unity, I do hereby invite the leadership of all political parties and other national leaders to the official opening ceremony of the 2022 National Bicentennial Commemoration to be held in February 14, 2022, as we memorialize in peace, unity, forgiveness, and reconciliation. As President and Chief Executive of our sweet land of liberty, Liberia, I want to call on all Liberians to champion the cause of national unity and to reconcile our differences for Liberia's growth and development. Let national unity reign everywhere in Liberia. Let peace reign across Liberia, our native land. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as part of this national unification effort, I will today plant two cotton trees, two cotton trees sitting here. I am informed that they will replace the male and female cotton trees that stood here majestically for probably centuries. Perhaps they were even standing here when the settler came. By planting the seedlings today, on the official commencement of the 2022 Barcelona, we are reinforcing the common heritage that unites all of us, both the descendants of the indigenous people and the descendants of the settler. We, we are one people with one destiny. Let me now close in the immortal words of our national artist. A union strong, such as the show, we cannot fail. With God above, our rights to prove, we will overall prevail. Long live Liberia, happy land. A glorious land of liberty by God's command.
I want to wish you a happy and a prosperous new year. All of you and our citizens around the world, I thank you. As you are standing, please give the VIP, the President's Excellency, another round of applause. A rousing round of applause. A rousing round of applause. A rousing round of applause. Thank you. Please take your seats. Thank you. Please take your seats. Hey, sweet Liberia. Sweet Liberia. Land of liberty is our own. Which I can sing to it. Try me out with Nakajana. We're coming now to perhaps one of the most significant part of our commemoration and celebration here today. Let me say that the president spoke about that in his speech just a while ago. The Providence Island is not just an island. If you were to come here when it is less populated, you'll be carried around on a garden tour and you'll find that this place has a lot of national relics and symbols. For example, there is a well here that's over 100 years old. And imagine that the well it's surrounded by the island, the water that is salted. But that well, water has never been salted. God has, us, God has given us such a wonderful country. And we should be proud of it. We should lift our heads up high. At this time, I'd like to call on Chief Zaza Kawa and the elders and traditional leaders of our country to come on stage. It is their time. Are they here? Yes. Chief Zanza is here. I know they were here. They slept on the island last night. Preparing the ground for the planting of the cutting tree seedlings by His Excellency the President. While they are coming, let the band give us Sweet Liberia. Sweet Liberia. Tony Kabade. Yeah. Do your thing. This is the time. This is the time to come together. To keep our country safe forever. Open up your hearts. Let the true love come right in. Love is how we need to make this day. Mr. President, let's call the help one than the other. Learn to live together as brothers and sisters. Without togetherness, we won't have a peace of mind. Cause love is how we need to make this day. Wave your hands, my dear. I love you, I love you. Land of labor, see, is our home. Let us keep it standing. It's a more than old play home that we have. Oh, 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 oh,
So he prayed on the Republic of Liberia. He had been asked to say something. He will talk the region. He will talk. God bless him. 
Yes, yeah, so like I said, Mr. President. Okay, Speaker. The Honorable Speaker of the House. Okay, Minister, the like saying the American, you're saying what right here. Pro temporary Minister, our guest, our ambassador, and our partners in progress. Okay, young women who you want, I am a teacher, but if you are and the Chete Bure, members of the four estate. In moments, he thanks all of you ever so much. I put to this world, special thanks go to the traditional coin, Judy Andy. They are both blessed young And the big one go to the president of the Republic of Liberia. Okay, and you won't by my follow me. And our own traditional son, Nathaniel Fellow Miguel, who near our traditional people. Okay, speaker. And the speaker who continue to shake the fire that our traditional people will be awake. This country belongs to us. We own this place. Those who are here, I want This place called Doswa. This place belongs to us. Tinyo mi abe a ju ya na diye e tin to le wan we wa je na adi. When our sons and daughters came 1821, they met us here. Kenya mi adi je na ru ya mo te ni wa 1822. But if the mare mare people really, they will always say 1822, 1822. But for him, as an Igwe of the Republic of Liberia, he remember 1821. Do what I did. When they came, what simply? They got down. What did King? Come on, my King. Long Peter get it. They asked for King Long Peter. One more, I got here. They wanted to see him. Wow, wow, wow. He escorted them. They were here. They saw him. And while they were trying to dramatize here, they were watching. I got blessed. I got you up back. He was saying a few things here, but he wanted to say more to where the cutting tree will be replanted today. They took cutting trees you see over there had name. That one fell. And your bang I'm near it too. If we plant it today, we get a name back to the cutting tree. Can we am one way? But the way we're going, by blessing. Your Excellency, Mr. President. You send it to Banao. That not everybody can see where you planting cardi fuel, Mr. President. Young say nigga job button. Traditionally, culturally, Mr. President for the second time. And not everybody can see where you planting cardi tree. Take your bullet in your what they can do. No members of the essay. We enter with you, Mr. President, your honor, sir. Get to your so that and bend you. The cutting tree that we're going to plant today, the presentation cannot be done here in this public manner. We will carry you. Again, young dear, and people that just certify way to be with you. And you security check in. Again, you win. I'm a young best security I won't be. If you will be thinking about security to protect you, the chiefs of the land, they are the best of securities of you. So I went to Ageba. We agree that the cardin tree will be planted today. Okay, I'm on more. We want you, Your Excellency. Okay, you put turn. And three person, three person. Okay, Maggie. With our son, Maggie. 
Nenya kenyu kwe chua kaya nga Asimonyo tengwa je Mr. President, we got a lot of things to do. Yoko, Yoko, Yaka, Yoko. Everybody now support to see that this is Africa and we're doing tradition. Hmm. So, yeah, for the reason, I'm going to thank you ever so much. And I want, we agree on a bank when it is planted. And I see it. If we also, then you are there and I'm sorry. The thing that they go around that place there when they removed, you say one picture is why you want to be The anybody from the church of Poleo, who Poleo, you want to follow now, you can go there. Get there, ba ba ba, be no, come on, we can't bring you. We're going to do it that the way our forefathers, our ancestors did it. This is a tradition. You can't augment tradition. You can't modify tradition. Tradition is tradition. Except we say we want tradition. When we want tradition, it remains tradition. So we're talking about what? May God bless all of us. Hello, how we say? Okay, thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. You heard from the traditional leaders themselves. So this is what we're gonna do. I am the master of ceremonies here. So we're gonna now do the closing prayer because the president and the traditional leaders will go to the site for the planting of the tree. I, I don't suppose that the excellency will have to come back here to close. So we now stand into the closing prayer. And then the president and the traditional leaders and some dignitaries will go and perform the ritual of the planting of the coconut tree seedlings. And then we'll call it a day. But we know there are a lot of attractions here taking place on the island. So make yourselves journey. Let me also say to you that we now launched the bicentennial website. It is www.viberia.bicentennial.gov.com. Take time off every now and then to visit the website as we update it to give you more and more information about the activities of the bicentennial. The president already told you that in fact on February 14th, that's about a month, a week and a month from now, we will be celebrating the rolling down to the official launch of the bicentennial. Today was just the kickoff, an appetizer, as we call it, to the actual launch. We gave you more and more information as the, day, the days go by. So on that note, let me call now Iman Rai. National Muslim Council of Liberia to do the benediction. Okay. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is the end of uh, the program, the Barcelona opening launch.
inside the box, I will believe that the future will be bright for Liberia, inshallah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. That was the voice of the chief imam of the Republic of Liberia here talking to us on Vision TV. We have some historical names here. Hi, Elijah Johnson. For two long years, I have searched for a home. Yeah, I have found one. And here I shall remain. That was uh, Elijah Johnson here, an historian, yeah? And we are still here. Uh, we see uh, Yenswap Swakoko, the warriors, the power chief of Central Providence, now Bone County. Here, presses. Here, the is also here. This is Mount Swakopo. Female warrior and paramount chief. Here, may her letter delayed forever. Alright, this is uh, the historical world. This is the historical world that you see that our settlers dug uh, for years and years. As you can see, water that coming from it since uh, 100 years now. This is the historical world here. This is the historical world here. Well, we will go to some traditional carving here. I've been joined by African traditionalists here. Well made Liberia, well produced in Liberia here. Taking you back to your village. And I see. This picture reminds me uh, when we were very, very uh, small, living with our parents. That's what normally we do. Sometimes we fell over the pan of rice. That is Liberia, folks. Here we are. As the young kids coming up. We are here live at the Providence Island where Liberia celebrated 200 years of existence. We have Batpolu, uh, we have Lofa County. Lofa, I'm proud to be a Lofian here. This fellow represents Lofa. And we have River G County. All the way, River G County. We have uh, the people from River G are also here uh, identifying with uh, where they come from. And we have uh, Nim 
Green Mat County is also, is also present here. We have Nima County. We have our uh, here. We have Riverside County. Wow. And we have. Look, you put from Riverside. You're in the Riverside Hall. You're from there. And in Riverside, you see here. When you're in Riverside Hall, you go to the public. Tradition carving here, right here, right, right here. Very, very beautiful. I. We have uh, the seal of the uh, the, uh, the seal said the love of liberty they brought us here, and uh, the map of Liberia. And I see the Sunny Claus face. So, where are the faces for? Who here? Yeah. So it's which chapel is that? Where's the Gola trap? The Gola? But yeah. a lot of people see it. So there's is a Gola. Yeah. Wow. Very beautiful. And so if you are uh, a Gola person, here is your tradition heritage. All the way from... Uh, which, one is, which one is this? The other one. Mano. The Mano? Yes, so if you're all the way from, from Nima County, yes. we have the Mano and we have the Gyo also here. And which one is, is that? That the is, is the Gyo there. The Basa. The Basa and the Va. The and this one? The Va and the Grobo. The Va and the Grobo. Yes. So if you are from Maryland County, and Grand Cape Mount County here yeah, is your 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 traditions here yeah, representing Grand Cayman County yes. and Merlin. And we have the, the love of liberty brought us here. Very calm. Wow. 
Kevin, que ele tava. Kevin, tô zoando ele. Tô zoando ele, porra. Tô zoando ele. so much this is uh, the ship and we say thanks for watching this is uh, the ship of Elizabeth and this is the ship of uh, Elizabeth 1822 that brought the first free slave uh, from Europe in America. Yeah, this is a ship that brought out people. We have the representative from uh, the student unification party suit. Yeah, the student movement. Also here chanting the battle cry. This is the student movement. Linsu, Linsu, Linsu. So you have a Linsu. You guys have a Linsu. All right. Thank you ever so much. We have the Linsu. The Linsu here. Yeah.
but uh, the Joseph speech to one of the groups. And I saw a huge crowd coming with the president. And, 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 and that shows that they don't feel good. They are so uh, happy to see this celebration.
all right folks we want to say thanks for watching we are not shutting this broadcast down and we say thanks ever so much and this is vision online tv we have been coming to you live from uh, the problem we have been coming to you live from uh, the Provident last land. And we say thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And this is Vision Online TV. We are not shutting this broadcast down. Thanks ever so much. Uh, Liberia Bar Centennial celebrate celebrations of it 200 years of uh, of existing uh, Pan African leadership. We say thanks for watching. This was the opening. Uh, this was the opening here at the. Providence Island and a historical place and we say thanks ever so much.